Hello, everybody. This is Rick from the Hell Ming Power Hour and a bunch of other goofy shows that I've done. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Attack of the Beast Creatures from 1985. Uh, this Joker starts off with a shipwreck in the 1920s. And we're tagging along with a group that's stuck in a lifeboat for the first six minutes of the dang movie. And it's just film footage of them lost at sea and the seemingly lost at sea credits with no end in sight. These credits just seem to go on forever. And then luckily we end up washing ashore and they have no idea where they are. And this is a very motley crew of people in this group. There's there's Milligan and then there's the skipper, too, and a millionaire and his wife. Uh, wait a minute. I, I think I'm getting that confused with something else. But but anyways, you do have one guy who's in bad shape when they get to the island. And then there's always the one guy who says, well, he's as good as dead. So I'm just going to take care of myself and screw everybody else. Yeah. Ironically, that guy's name is Morgan. So, you know, I can relate. One thing I want to point out is I have to hand it to these guys that are on this little lifeboat that either they were having a five star dinner on the on the big ship when it was crashing or whatever or they actually worked on the ship because everyone is dressed to the nines and after all these days at sea they still have their jackets and ties on i i guess if you're going to go out go out in style right that would be the first thing that you would want to get rid of i would imagine it would be a, a necktie anyways the jacket squad uh, they pulled the injured man from the boat. I guess they're thinking it's going to be a more safe place to put him, and they just lay him out in the sun so he can rest, I guess. But um, more than likely, I think this guy's just going to become seagull food, and uh, the rest of the group just goes out and searches for food and water. And then we start getting that lagging character development that eats up the clock and doesn't really matter. But at this point... One of our suited guys goes out and sees a small lagoon and he sticks his face and hands into it to get a drink and it melts his hands and his face right off. It's pretty gruesome and really not too bad for a low budget flick. I kind of enjoyed it. But uh, so the, the other guys later on, they're trying to bury the melted man. And the ladies go to pick some berries and they totally forget about the dude that they left laying out in the open. So one guy goes back, I call him handkerchief guy because he has a handkerchief tied around his neck, goes back to check on him, and now he's just a bloody skeleton laying there. Clothes and everything's all gone. It's just a skeleton with a few globs of blood on it. It's pretty comical. Now we get to a night scene where some of the guys are having a conversation, but you really can't make out what's being said because the campfire sound effect is so loud in the mix did you you really can't understand a word they're saying? It's just like just a bunch of crackling and people going, yep, ever that's all you hear. Uh, so it probably doesn't really matter though. It's pretty much I imagine they're talking about the skeleton dude about yeah. I wonder what did that to him. Yeah, it'd be a good question because either the seagulls right there are pretty bad, which I brought up earlier, or there's something else I miss on this island, right? Also. The movie is slowly becoming a new hit TV show called Everybody Hates Morgan because he's a douche. But that night, while everybody is trying to rest, they get attacked by some screeching, extra-large hot dogs with glowing eyes and sharp teeth and long black hair, and they stand upright and charge at you like a rabid badger. To be honest, they kind of look like a ripoff of the Zuni doll from Trilogy of Terror, which I'm cool with. And they are biting human legs and climbing up and biting their backs. And these little things are vicious, man. But the, the crew was able to fight them off just by, like, hitting them and slinging them around. And uh, we could see one even thrown into the fire, and it burns up. It's good, clean family fun. But uh, everybody seems all right except Morgan, who now has a bum leg. And we need to move on. And much to my surprise, and theirs, I'm sure, the island is the size of Nebraska. And the migration scene takes forever, with a few Oscar Mayer demons popping up from time to time, but nothing major except Morgan gets to crush one with a rock. And at this time, they stumble upon another watering hole. And at this time, the water is all right. But uh, they end up letting the guard down, and guess what? They get ambushed. 
hysterically. People flailing around, holding a bunch of hairy bratwurst, screaming at the top of their lungs. <laughs> it's awesome. And I love that every time the creatures go after Morgan, they go after the bum leg every time. It's almost like, you know, karate kids sweep the leg kind of thing, right? They know that's the point of attack. And really, there shouldn't be anything left of his leg at this point. They come back and bit him so many times there. After it's all said and done, we lose one of the ladies, and the emotions run heavy on that Casio keyboard soundtrack. But let's face it, it's, it's about dang time we lost somebody else. Do you know what we do now? That's right, more walking, Frodo. Now Morgan has flipped his lid, and he's running wild and actually bites one of the beasts. The, the, one of the creatures jumps up on him, he grabs it, and he takes a bite out of the creature, slams it to the ground, and he takes off running, and he falls into the, another acid lake, and now he's a bubbling mess. And it's at this point that I say, Rick, how can there still be 20 minutes left in this thing? It's a mystery. So the group continues its journey to Mordor, with plenty of Casio music to boot. And they get to a mountaintop and they find out there's a whole tribe of these things and they worship a giant Lego figure. So our crew takes off running away while being chased, which will ultimately lead us into a big, hairy wiener assault. At this point, the guy that looks like Al Borland from Home Improvement impales himself on a random stick, and one of the guys stays with Al while the rest are running down to get back to the boat and get to the water so they can leave Hot Dog Island. But Handkerchief Dude falls into a pit that the creatures have dug, and they just jump in there and just chew him up and eat him. And elsewhere, the two girls that are left, they're being attacked as well. But then John Oates shows up and saves the day. But the creatures kill one of the girls, so John Oates and the last girl run to the beach while showing flashbacks of deaths that they weren't even there to see. And they run out into the water and get saved by a couple of 70s male porn stars in a rowboat, and they leave the island. Who are these guys? No frickin' idea. They just show up in a rowboat. You hear them say, look, a ship. Well, you never see a ship. You just see these two Harry Reams-looking dudes pulling up in a boat, a little paddle boat, and they jump in and... That's the end. So what do I think about this movie? Well, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good, but you know what? I can see where this would be fun in a group setting, almost a short bus cinema kind of situation. But uh, yeah, it, it was kind of dragging on. And I just like, for Pete's sake, stop walking. I think uh, Lord of the Rings has it beat by about two movies worth of walking, but Nevertheless, this was an hour and 22 minutes, and I would say an hour of it is walking. But anyways, it's still fun. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. I tell you, the acting is not too terrible. The effects, you know, are okay for what it is. I, I don't think the movie takes itself seriously, and that's the fun of it. So take your chances, grab your wiener, and have some fun. Hey, kids, wasn't that fun uh, talking about uh racially insensitive creatures because you know again i've seen these creatures and they don't look too uh culturally appropriate is a word i'll use uh <laughs> but we had a good time listening to rick talk about the film and um yeah thank you brother listen to hail ming and all of his uh his joint ventures and um next time on the 31 days of howling beasts we're going to another friend and we're going to talk about a, a, a reputable film if you will, this is one people like, and this guy scooped it up right away. You may know him from the Horror Mafia podcast and his website, and I, I, wish, I don't have the name of guys, I'm sorry, but uh, you may know him as Donnie Rings. We all know him as Don and Nelly. Yes, that's, that's that guy that pushes all of our great podcasts. Every day they come out, so you guys should love and commend my friend Don and Nelly. But you will hear about uh, a, a beast that was created by Ray Harryhausen himself. And we're doing, he's doing the beast from 20,000 Fathoms. So enjoy that shit.